अरुणदायक कीर्तन ओ दिलो अरुणापुर भागे द्विज मनि घोरा मनि जागे ओढ़ी लो आरुना पूर्व भागे द्विजमने घोरा मने जागे बकत सामुहालो लसाते जेलना कर भाकत समूह लोए लसाते जेलना कर ताताए ताताए बजल को जानगाना तहे जंजेर रो ताताए ताताए बजल को गन्ना गन्ना था हे जंजेर रो प्रेमे डाला डाला सोना रंगा चारने नो पुरबाजे दल्ला दल्ला सोना रंगा चारने नो पूरा बाहजे मोकुंडा माधवया धवारी बोले न बोलो रे बंधन न भोरे मुकुंद माधवा यदवाहरी बोले न बोलो रे बंधन न भोरे मिचीनी डाब से जेलोरे राते दिवस शारी रसाजे मिचीनी डाब से जेलोरे राते दिवशारी रसाजे एमन दूर लबामन बदे हो आया कि कोरो बाबन के हो
Emanadur la ba manavateho Payaki koro ba vanakeho Ebena ba jile ya shoda suta Chara ne pori bela che Ebena ba jile ya shoda suta Chara ne pori bela che O dita tapana hoi le asta Dina jelo boi le hoi bebi asta O dita tapana hoi le asta Dinna jello boy le hai baby asta Ta be ke no e be alla sa hoi No bo jo rid hoi a raje Habe ke no e be alla sa hoi Na ba jari da ya raje Jeevan Jeevana nitya jana hasa Kahina na vida vipada bar Jeevana anitya jana hasa Kahina na vida vipada bar Namashraya kori yatane tumi Thaka apana kaje Namashraya kori yatane tumi Taka apana kaje Jivera kalyana sadhana kam Jagate asi emadhura nam Jivera kalyana sadhana kam Jagate asi e madhura nam Avidyati mira tapana rupi 
Rigagane virache Avijati mira tapana rupe Rigagane virache Krishna nam shura kori apan yudo bhakti vinoda pan Krishna nam shura kori apan Yudo bhakati vinoda pran Nama bina kichu nahi koara Choda bhova nama che Nama bina kichu nahi koara Choda bhova nama che Jeev jago, jeev jago Gora chanda bole Jeev jago, jeev jago Gora chanda bole Kota nidra jaya maya Pisha chira kole Kota nidra jaya maya Pisha chira kole Baji bopali aese Samsara bitare Baji bopali aese Samsara bitare Bole arohi le tumi Avijara bore Bole arohi le tumi Avijara bahare Tomare loe te ami 
Hainu Avatara Tomare Lohe Te Ami Hainu Avatara Ami Bina Bandu Ar Kea Che Tomara Ami Bina Bandu Ar Ke ache to mahara Ene che o shadi maya Nashi bara lahagi Eneche o shadhi maya Nashi bara lagi Hare nama maha mantra Lo to me mahake Hare nama maha mantra Lo to me mahake Baka te vinoda prabhu charane pareya Baka te vinoda prabhu Charane Pariya Se Hare Nama Mantra Lai Lama Gheya Se Hare Nama Mantra Lai Lama Gheya Jaya Bhakti Vinodha Kaur Bhakti Vinodha Kaur Bhakti Vinodha Kaur Bhakti Vinodha Kaur Nittai Gaur Haribo 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 Nittai Gaur Haribo Jai Harinam Sankirtan Ki Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya
ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नारम चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्टप्रयु बभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भागवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिकी We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Eight, today, text number eighteen. This chapter is entitled "Prayers by Queen Kunti." Kunti Ovacha. नमस्ते पुरुषम् स्वद्यम् ईश्वरम् प्रतिते परम् अलक्ष्यम् सर्वभूतानम् अंतर बाहिरवस्तितम् कुंतियो वाच्या नमस्ये पुरुषम् स्वद्यम् ईश्वरम् प्रकृते परम् अलक्ष्यम् सर्वभूतानम् अंतर बहिरवस्तितम् कुंतियोवच्या नमस्ये पुरुषम् त्वद्यम् ईश्वरम् प्रकृते परम् अलक्ष्यम् सर्वभूतानम् अंतर बाहिरवस्तितम्
Conte Ovacha Shemati Conti said Namashe Let me bow down Purusham the Supreme Person Twa you Adyam the original Ishwaram the controller Prakriti of the material cosmos Param beyond Alakshyam the invisible Sarva all Bhutanam of living beings Anta within Bahi without Avastitam existing. Translation Srimati Kunti said, O Krishna, I offer my abase I offer my obeisances unto you because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world. You are existing both within and without everything, yet you are invisible to all. You can all repeat. Srimati Kunti said, O oh Krishna, I offer my obeisances unto you because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world. You are existing both within and without everything. Yet you are invisible to all. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srimati Kunti was quite aware that Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, although he was playing the part of her nephew. Such an enlightened lady could not commit a mistake by offering obeisances unto her nephew. Therefore, she addresses him as the original Purusha, beyond the, beyond the material cosmos. Although all living entities are also transcendental, they are neither original nor infallible. The living entities are apt to fall down under the clutches of material nature. But the Lord is never like that. In the Vedas, therefore, he is described as the chief among all living entities. Nityo Nityanam Chaitananas Chaitananam. Then again, he is addressed as Ishwara or the controller. The living entities are the demigods like Chandra and Surya are also to some extent Ishwara, but none of them is the supreme Ishwara or the ultimate controller. He is, the, he is the Parameshwar or the super soul. He is both within and without. Although he was present before Srimati Kunti as her nephew, he was also within her and everyone else. In Bhagavad Gita 15.15, the Lord says, 
I am situated in everyone's heart, and only due to me one remembers, forgets, and is cognizant, etc. Through all the Vedas, I am to be known because I am the compiler of the Vedas and I am the teacher of the Vedas, of the Vedanta. Queen Kunti affirms that the Lord, although both within and without all living beings, is still invisible. The Lord is, so to speak, a puzzle for the common man. Queen Kunti experienced personally that Lord Krishna was present before her, yet he entered within the womb of Uttara to save her embryo from the attack of Ashwat Ashwatthama's Brahmastra. Kunti herself was puzzled about whether Sri Krishna is all-pervasive or localized. In fact, he is both, but he reserved the right of not being exposed to persons who are not surrendered souls. This, this checking curtain is called the Maya energy of the Supreme Lord, and it controls the limited vision of the rebellious soul. It is explained as follows. Omagyanatamarandasya gyananjana shalakaya Chatsurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha Shri Chaitanya mano bistam stapitam yena bhutale Swayam rupakadamayam dadati swapadantikam Bandeham shri guru shri yatapadakamalam Shri gurun vaishnavam scha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamscha Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu, Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namastate, Tapta Kanchana Gorange, Radhe Vrindavanishwari, Vrishavanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Vanchakaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri adwaita gadadhar shri vasade gor bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this is the first verse of Queen Kunti's prayers. Actually, there's, a num uh, there's 26 in number verses spoken by Queen Kunti. We'll see in this chapter as you go through one by one. So this is her initial verse, and she is beginning by offering her obeisances to Lord Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada points out that Queen Kunti is aware of the identity of Lord Krishna 
as the Supreme Lord. Although Lord Krishna is appearing in the family of Queen Kunti as the nephew of Queen Kunti, but still Queen Kunti is not bewildered into thinking that this is actually the position of the Lord. She understands the Lord is the supreme being over everyone. Queen Kunti, of course, was the sister of Vasudev. But when she was a child, her father gave her away to his friend Kunti Boja. So Kunti's name initially was Prita, but then when she was given away to Kunti Boja, then she took the name Kunti. But still, she had that relationship with Vasudev, who was actually her father, uh, rather brother. Vasudev and Kunti were brother and sister. The father was, father was Surya Sin. So like this, Kunti is related to Lord Krishna, but she understands the actual identity of Lord Krishna, that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord above everyone. So she describes him as a Purusham, the, the original enjoyer the original personality of Godhead. We are also Purushas, but we are not on the position of Lord Krishna. We are trying to be Purushas. We are trying to be the enjoyers. But uh, it is Lord Krishna who is the original supreme enjoyer. As Prabhupada explains in the purport, Lord Krishna is infallible. We are fallible. We fall down. We fall under the influence of the material energy. But Lord Krishna never falls under the influence of the material energy because the material energy is under his control. Mayadyakshena prakriti suyate tacharacharam hetunanena kontiya jagad viparivartate. Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita this material nature moves under my direction, O son of Kunti. It is not independent as materialistic, atheistic people think but it is fully dependent. And this was realized also by Srila Vyasadev. When Srila Vyasadev was given instruction by Narada Muni that he should properly glorify the process of devotion, at that time, Srila Vyasadev sat in meditation and he contemplated the Lord and he saw the Lord and he saw the material energy, and he saw how the material energy was moving under the control of the Lord, not independently. And Lord Brahma also describes similarly, Shristi stiti pralaya sadhana saktareka. Come up. Lord, Lord Brahma describes that the material nature is worshipped by all people in the form of Durga, Mother Durga, the creating, maintaining, and annihilating deity of the mundane world is Mother Durga. But Mother Durga moves like a shadow under the control of the Supreme Lord not independently. She is also fully controlled and controlled by the Lord himself. So it is bewildering because Lord Krishna appears uh, 
in front of Queen Kunti. He's standing in front of her, but at the same time, Queen Kunti had just seen, just, just before she offered that prayer, at, she had seen how Lord Krishna had protected the child in the womb of Uttara because Ashwatthama had thrown the Brahmastra weapon trying to destroy the one survive the one descendant of the Yadu dynasty of uh, the Kuru the, the Kuru dynasty R Ashwatthama wanted to kill all the people he didn't want them that there should be any dis any anyone left to become the the ruler and he'd already killed the sleeping sons of Draupadi. Draupadi had five sons, one by each of the Pandavas, and Ashwatthama had come in the night and killed them when they were, in, when they were asleep. And then he had released a Brahmastra weapon against Uttara because she was carrying the child of Abhimanu in her womb. And so Ashwatthama wanted to, de to destroy that child. But Lord Krishna protected the child from the heat of the Brahmastra weapon. So Queen Kunti saw how Lord Krishna was not only in front of her and standing physically in her presence, but he was also within the womb of Uttara. And not only is he in the womb of Uttara, but he's in everything. He's everywhere. As Prabhupada quotes from Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasya Chaham, Redi Sani Visto, Matak Smit Argan Apon, Vedaischa Sarvam Aham Eva Vidya, Vedanta Krit Veda Vid Eva Cha. Lord Krishna said he's in the hearts of all living entities. Not only is he in the hearts, he's within the atom. He's within every atom. So he's also there within that womb of Uttara. Not only, only in Uttara's womb, but in every womb. He's everywhere, in everything. He is omnipresent. His, his, so his, he's in everything. So Prabhupada says, Queen Kunti was trying to understand, is the Lord all pervasive or is he localized? In one sense, Lord Krishna was all pervasive because he was in the womb of Uttara and he could protect the child. At the same time, the Lord is localized because he was standing personally, directly in front of Queen Kunti. And Queen Kunti is offering her prayers in this way. And so she describes how the Lord is everywhere in every, but at the same time, he is invisible to all. So this is also described in the Bhagavad Gita, when Lord Krishna describes his potency, he said, Matakparataram nanyat kinchid asti dananjaya, mai sarvam idam proktram sutre mani gana eva. Lord Krishna said, There is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just like perils are strung on a thread. So Lord Krishna gives an example about the beads being on the thread. Just like we all have our neck beads, we wear this tosi mala around our neck. And when the beads are in proper order, you only see the beads. You don't see the thread, which is holding everything together. So similarly, Lord Krishna describes his relationship with the material world in this way. He said, everything is resting on me, just like the perils are strung on a thread. You don't see the thread, you see the perils. 
that he comes to help his devotees. He will not allow his devotees to perish. Krishna has to reciprocate with the loving mood. So Queen Kunti offers this prayer to Krishna that you're within everything, you're outside of everything. But at the same time, you're invisible to all. Invisible. In the next verse, Queen Kunti will go on to explain how it is that Krishna is invisible. And she gives an example. She says, just like an actor on the stage will not be known. If you do dramas, when you do a drama, if you have somebody who is really good in drama, you cannot recognize them. I was watching, uh, I was some, one time I was in Chaupati, and they were, the Chaupati devotees were doing a drama. And they had this one devotee. And this, the one devotee, you know, his, just from his very voice, immediately you knew who it was, you know. Although he was dressed up, he had a big costume on, and you know, you didn't recognize who he was. But as soon as the voice came, oh, we know who it is. <laughs> you can immediately identify. But somebody who is really expert in drama, who really good act, you'll never recognize. You think, who is that? Who, who is that person? They're so good, you know, they, they, their voice and their appearance and their movements, everything is just different, and you cannot recognize them. So Lord Krishna, he appears in this world like that. People cannot recognize him as the Supreme Lord. Therefore, Krishna said, Abhijananti Mamudha. The foolish mock at me descending amongst them like a human being. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over everything. This is all Krishna's pastimes. He's coming in this world and he's bewildering everyone. He's performing so many different wonderful pastimes. To Mother Yashoda Nanda Maharaj, he's the perfect child. Just like when Krishna went to Mathura, in the wrestling arena at Mathura, there were many different people and they all saw Krishna in different ways. The wrestlers, they saw Krishna as a thunderbolt. Kamsa, he saw Krishna as cruel death. Mother Yashoda, not all the people from Vrindavan, the cowherd men, they saw Krishna as the dearmost child. The ladies of Mathura, they were thinking Krishna is the most beautiful young man. They were all seeing Krishna in different ways according to their particular re relationship with Krishna. So Krishna reveals himself to different devotees in a different, according to how they approach him. It's up to Krishna to reveal himself. Prabhupada said, there's only one qualification to see God. Right? And Prabhupada quoted Brahma Samhita. Premanjana charita bhakti vilo chanena. It said, when your eyes are anointed with prema, then you can see God. Just like the little children, the mother will put ointment on the eye to protect his eyes from the glaring heat or the sun. And so the same way, we have to put the ointment of prema on our eyes then we can actually see God. You want to see Krishna? You have to
to be qualified. The qualification is you, we have to have that love. So people don't have that love. We, we have, we, people speak of love in the material world. They think like that. The, the young woman will say to her young boyfriend, do you love me like this? They're thinking love is something based on the body. They do not understand what is real love. So, we understand from the message of Lord Krishna, or Lord Brahma, rather. He said, uh, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Krishna, Shamsundar himself, with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotee sees within the heart of hearts, with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. So when we see Krishna in the heart, that is real love. And we have to see with devotion, that devotion that we want Krishna, we want to love Krishna. Prabhupada would say love means love to Krishna. There's no love in the material world. There's the illusion of love. But actually love means to Krishna. We all, and we all have love of Krishna, but it has to be awakened. And how do we develop our love of Krishna? Nit, nit, that is, it is stated, Nijasiddha Krishna Prem Sadya Kabunai Shravanadi Shudachiti Kori Hyudai. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes how we can awaken our love for Krishna. He said, Nijasiddha Krishna Prem. Love of Krishna is eternally in the heart of all living entities. And it is awakened by hearing. We have to hear about Krishna in order to awaken that loving relationship. We see, for example, how Rukmini, the goddess of fortune herself, she comes in Krishna's pastime. And she is born in a family. She's born in a family where her brothers are not devotees. Rukmini had a brother named Rukmi. Now Rukmini, she had heard about Krishna and she was immediately attracted. Narada Muni had told her about Krishna and she understood that Krishna is the best person, that I only want Krishna for a husband. I don't want to marry anybody else. But her brother, Rukmi, he'd heard about Krishna, but he decided he didn't want to give his sister to Krishna. He wanted to give his sister to Sishupal, who was his friend. So although Although they had both heard about Krishna, one person accepted Krishna and the other rejected. Rukmini heard about Krishna and she immediately accepted Krishna. And she understood, I want Krishna. I don't want any other man. But her brother, he heard about Krishna and he thought, I don't want Krishna. I want my friend Sishupal. He rejected Krishna. So we have to understand we all have independence. We are given free will. We can choose accept Krishna or reject Krishna. What do you want? Do you want to accept Krishna and be the devotee 
or do you want to reject Krishna? If we reject Krishna, then we accept Maya. Instead of being under the control of Krishna, we come under the control of the Maya, the material energy. This is the choice. We are given that independence, either to accept Krishna or reject Krishna. Now someone may think, oh, if I accept Krishna, I have to be controlled by Krishna. But if we don't accept Krishna, then you're controlled by Maya. You're always controlled. Either we are controlled by Krishna or by Maya. It's our choice. Do we want to be controlled by Maya? Maya is a cruel master. She places us under the modes of nature. People think, I am free. I can do what I like. You Hare Krishna people, you're not free. You have to follow rules and regulations. You have your yam and niyam. You have your restrictions. You can't do so many things. But the materialist will say, I am free. I can do as I like. I can eat whatever I like. I can go wherever I like. They're thinking like that. That is their illusion. They're thinking they're free. Actually, they're not free. Actually, they are controlled by the material energy. The material nature is controlling them. But the devotees, they take the shelter of Krishna. They're also controlled, but they're controlled by the internal energy of Krishna. Mahatmanas to Mamparta, Daivim Prakritim Ashrita. The great souls are under the protection of my divine energy. They are fully engaged in devotional service. So Mahatmas, the devotees are all Mahatmas, and they're under the protection of the divine energy. Yes, Krishna's internal potency is controlling the devotees. That is liberating. Those who are under the protection of Krishna's internal potency are the liberated soul. And those who are under the material energy, they are the conditioned souls. They are struggling with the mind and senses. They are struggling with the material energy. We have that choice. This is the will, the free will of the devotee. Take the shelter of Krishna or take the shelter of Maya. So what do you want, Krishna or Maya? Krishna gives us that independence, just a little independence. We don't have great, we're not, we're not like Krishna. Krishna is fully independent. In the very first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, nah, Janmajishya yato navayat itaratas chatishu abhigyana swarat. Swarat, independent. This is Krishna. He is completely independent. We are not completely independent. We, are, we simply have this one choice, Krishna or Maya. As soon as you take Krishna, then you're under the energy, the control of Krishna. As soon as you accept Maya, then you're under the control of Maya. But not free. There's no question free will. 
But this is the illusion. This is the, the thinking of foolish people. They're thinking, I'm free. I can do what I like. In every step, they are controlled. So Lord Krishna has come. He has appeared in front of the Pandavas and Queen Kunti. And Queen Kunti is offering her prayers. And Srila Prabhupada is also and elaborating on the prayers of Queen Kunti. So in the course of studying these verses of Queen Kunti, we get the association of Queen Kunti and Srila Prabhupada. We're hearing from both these great devotees about the glories of Lord Krishna. So Prabhupada lectured on these prayers of Queen Kunti. There's a book, Teachings of Queen, Prayers by Queen Kunti. Prabhupada lectures, some verses on, were, were, some lectures were given in New York Temple, and some other lectures were given in the Los Angeles Temple. So, we encourage the devotees, meditate on these wonderful prayers offered by Queen Kunti. And we will learn how to pray to Krishna. How does a pure devotee pray? We're learning from the words of Queen Kunti. Praying is very important. One of the nine angas of bhakti, offering prayers. And who is our acharya in offering prayers? Huh? Akrura. Akrura, yes. Akrura is the Acharya in offering prayers. He got perfection just by offering prayers to Lord Krishna. So we can also learn how to offer nice prayers to Krishna by hearing these prayers of Queen Kunti. Are there any questions? Any comment? Anyone? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much Maharaj for your nice class. Uh, Maharaj, uh, prayers is like sometimes it will be kirtan, glorification, and sometimes vandanam, like obeisances. And so, akrura is for vandanam. So, prayers is generally vandanam only, or even kirtan is also si kind of prayer. Prayers? Yes, vandanam. Uh. Shravanam, Kirtan, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandam, Dashyam, Sakyam, Atmani, Vedanam. So, Vandanam. Yes. Prayers. Vandanam. Prayers also contain glorifications of the Lord sometimes. Yes. There are different ways to offer prayers. You can glorify the Lord. Yes, we definitely, generally, in offering prayers, that at least the prayer will begin, will begin the prayer by glorifying the Lord and describing the qualities of the Lord. We offer the prayers. Now, usually when people offer prayers, they will, they will have something. They want something. Just like you may want you may want pure devotion. You may want loving service to Krishna. You may want to be engaged directly in the service of the Lord. You may want to go back to Godhead, to go to the spiritual world. You have something you want to ask for in your prayer. Usually that's a pr when people offer prayers, there's something they want. Not always. But 
for example, we see in Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma is offering prayers all the time. Govinda Madhi Pursham Tama. Ne there's no request. He never asks for anything. Queen Kunti, she, she will ask, you know, first of all, her problem is Krishna wants to leave. Now Krishna has been protecting the Pandavas and Queen Kunti from so many calamities. And now Krishna is ready to go back to Dwarka. And Queen Kunti, she just, the thought of Krishna leaving is unbearable to her because she, they've been so dependent on Krishna that Krishna had saved the child when the Brahmastra weapon was thrown. It was Krishna, time after time, who saved the devotees. When Arjuna was in danger and Bhishma was coming to kill Arjuna, Krishna picked up the chariot wheel and rushed towards Bhishma. So Krishna is saving the Pandavas time after time and Queen Kunti is appreciating that if Krishna goes, what will happen? There'll be nobody there to protect us. How will, how will we survive? You've saved us so many times. How can you leave us? And so Queen Kunti doesn't like the thought of Krishna leaving. And so her prayer is like that. She's requesting Krishna that you should stay longer. So prayer, but there will be some purpose. But you know, as I said, Lord Brahma didn't pray for anything. Sometimes he may pray for something. Just like I, we know when 5,000 years ago, Lord Brahma went to the shore of the milk ocean when Mother Earth came and she was disturbed with all the demonic kings on her planet. She came to Lord Brahma for help. And Lord Brahma, he meditated on Sweta Dweep. He meditated on Shirodakashai Vishnu. So he wanted help. So t sometimes Lord Brahma does want help. But the prayers which are offered in Brahma Samhita, there's no request there. You see, Gajendra Moksha, Gajendra Moksha, he. He's, a, he, he's praying, you know, protect him, save him from the crocodile, release him. Dhruva Maharaj, he went, he offered prayers initially. He had a desire, he wanted a kingdom. And so you're praying. Prahlad Maharaj offered prayers to Lord Nishringadev. And then Lord Nishringadev told him, you, you should ask for something. He wanted Prahlad to ask for something. But Prahlad didn't want to ask for anything. Prahlad said, no, I'm not a businessman. I don't want to ask you for anything. But Lord Nishringadev insisted, no, you should ask for something. So then Prahlad said, bless me that in my heart there will be no desire for sense gratification. So that was Prahlad's prayer. And then he prayed also for his father, don't let my father go to hell. So like that. So prayer is done in a particular manner that you begin by glorifying. Sometimes we give the example, maybe you have a child, maybe you have a son or a daughter, you know, and as they grow up, they become more and more they become a, a, a little intelligent, you know. And so they may come to you and say, Father, my dear Father, you're so wonderful. I love you so much. You're so kind to me. You're so benevolent. I'm so lucky to have you for a father. And they'll glorify you. And then they say, I need a new handphone. Can you get me the new phone? You know, like that, you know. You offer prayers, you offer some words of flattery, and then you make your request at the end. But you don't have to request anything. You can just simply glorify, just simply offer prayers of glorification. 
we see the demigods coming into the prison house. Lord Krishna appeared in the womb of Devaki. The demigods come there in the prison house and they offer prayers to the Lord in the womb of Devaki. There are so many prayers in our scriptures. Srimad Bhagavatam is full of prayers. In Bhagavad Gita, you have Arjuna offering prayers to Krishna. When he sees the universal form, then Krishna, Arjuna offer, offers prayers to Krishna. And at that time, then he asked Krishna, he said, show me some other form. Show me the forearm form. And then he should show, show me your original form. So praying, we should, we, we should offer prayers regularly. In fact, every day we do, Mongol Arti, we offer prayers. We offer prayers to Tosi, we offer prayers to Prabhupada, Guru Puja. We do a lot of praying every day. Chanting Hare Krishna mantra is a prayer. Chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is a prayer and it's also the answer to the prayer. Because when you're chanting, then your prayer is being answered. The chanting of the Maha Mantra is a prayer to the Lord, please engage me in your service. But by chanting the holy name, you're engaging in service. So it's both a prayer and it's an answer to the prayer. So, you know, the Muslims, they may pray five times a day, but devotees of Krishna, they pray 24 hours a day. We're always praying. Yes? Understand? And it said, in the nectar of devotion, it said, one whose lips are always decorated with prayers to Lord Krishna is always given respect by saintly persons. And such persons are actually worshipable by the demigods. And so, keep your, your tongue, your lips always offering prayers. And in this way, you're glorified. Of course, to offer prayers, we have to hear first. Otherwise, we won't know how to glorify the Lord. You're going to glorify the Lord. You want to praise Him. You want to offer prayers. You should know about His qualities and you should be able to describe them. That is what prayers are. They're descriptions of the wonderful qualities of the Lord. So if you don't know anything about Krishna, then you have a hard time to offer prayers. So it's very important, before you try to offer prayers, first of all, you have to hear. You have to do hearing, first of all. When you have heard nicely, then you can go on and offer prayers. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, so Maharaj, you said we, sh we have to glorify Krishna. So when, we glo when, I, when I glorify Krishna, so I say, hey Krishna, you are the Ishwara. But inside my mind it is like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. So I am telling him that you are an Ishwara. You are a controller, but I am I am trying to control that I have to do this. So I am uh, so how to improve that quality of glorification? Quality of what? Glorification. When we glorify, I, I just artificially glorify. Inside it is like oh I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to go there, I have to do this. So I am glorifying, but not purely. So I am telling you, you are supreme personality of God, and you are the controller. And inside my mind it is like I have to control this, I have to control that. So it is, uh, I mean, it is parallel. So how can we improve that? Well, 
Well, we have to glorify the Lord. You see, if, if, if you're not able to offer proper prayers yourself, you can simply repeat the prayers of the great devotees. You take the prayers which the other great devotees have offered to the Lord, and you simply repeat as they have prayed to the Lord. We're not able so well to, to be, we're not so able to compose feeling prayers or suitable prayers on our, by our own efforts. So we simply repeat the prayers as we have heard the other devotees pray. Naratam Das Thakur has his book of prayers, Pratana. There are many beautiful prayers. We offer these. This is our, how we can best properly please the Lord. Just simply repeating these prayers which are given to us by great devotees, by pure-hearted souls. So we, we just repeat. Prabhupada wrote his arrival prayer when he came in the Boston Pier, he wrote his prayer there. Markina Bhagavata, huh? like that. These prayers, we can learn these songs, these prayers. So we don't know ourselves, we can repeat the prayers of others. But that's why they're here in the scriptures. That's why they're given to us, so that we can learn from them and we can repeat them. All right. Any other question? Okay. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai.